morning, and welcome to the study of Romans. I will be starting in chapter 2 today. Uh, Romans chapter 2. Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whosoever you are who judges. For wherein you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge do the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And do you think, O man, who judges them which do such things, and do the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or despise you the riches of his goodness, and forbearance, and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Last time we were uh, finished out Romans chapter 1, um, covering the wrath of God, that it's poured out against sin, and... Uh, what keeps coming back to me is that um, the love of God is in all of this. I've never really seen that before. Um, that's the nice thing about studying. I learn more than um, I probably teach. And, um, but I never saw this before, how that God's love is in everything he does. Um, People talk about the judgment of God and stuff, and um, through my growing up years and everything, but I never, never saw that it's actually God's love that He does this. Um, and it's all, it's not to destroy us, but it's to uh, bring us back to Him and to uh, make life better for us, really. Um, once again, sin is. Um, it's a violation of God's law, but it's not just because God decided this is wrong just because He wanted it to be wrong. It's because it hurts us. Sin hurts us in us or someone else or God in some way. And so it's because He loves us that He does not want us to do these things like we mentioned before, uh, just like a child, uh, wanting to do things that will hurt them, it makes you angry, you will punish them to try to not get them to do it. Um, not so much in today's world. It's in uh, the parenting has really dropped off in my lifetime. Um, no longer do parents love their kids. They love their animals more than their kids, and so they don't punish them. They say they love them, but do they really, if you don't correct them? Um, but God loves us, so he corrects us. He brings judgment against, and he gives us over to sin, as we saw last time. Um, if you keep wanting to go your own way, if you keep wanting to go into sin, he'll eventually turn you over to it. And that is something you don't want. Because um, sin always brings death, it brings bad results, and that's really our whole problem in this world. If it wasn't for sin, this would be a paradise. Um, in the expositor's notes on uh, verse 1, it says, In effect, that God judges one who judges another in the same manner in which he himself has judged, hence condemning himself. Matthew 7, 1-2. Um, so we'll maybe read that, uh, Matthew 7, verse 1, and I think I want to read to verse uh, 5. Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged, and with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why do, be, why do you behold the mote that is in your brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in your own eye? Or how will you say to your brother, Let me pull out the beam out of your eye, and behold, a beam is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of your own eye, then you shall see clearly to cast out the mote out of your brother's eye. Like we've said before, if you profess to know the message of the cross, and you are condemning other people, and thinking you're so much better than them, you don't really understand the cross. Um, 
And so getting back to uh, verse 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 1 of Romans, Therefore you are an inexcusable man, who, uh, whosoever you are who judges, for wherein thou you judge in other, you condemn yourself, for you who judge do the same things. If you claim to know the message of the cross, and you're still living by law, and you're judging those uh, who don't have the light you do, well, you're doing the same thing as them. You're still living under law, but you're more accountable. We'll see later in here that the Jews are more accountable because they had more knowledge. And so you, who have more knowledge, maybe it's still in your head. It hasn't got to your heart, but you're still more accountable because the light has been given you. And you haven't rejected the light, but don't go around judging others. If you really understand the message of the cross, you won't. Because you see it, that we stand by faith, by grace, in what Jesus did at the cross. Our faith is in what Christ did at the cross. And God's bringing us out of sin and out of unbelief and out of legalism and all this. And he's doing the same to others who don't see it as good as you do. Um, the same can be applied for, um, and what he's really talking about here, he, he, I mean, we just went through the list of, the downward spiral, how people, how the sin gets worse and worse in people's lives and in the, in a country, um, the United States, for instance, you know, see how we have spiraled down since, you know, the 60s, probably even before in the 40s and stuff, when the uh, rebellion against God really started in full swing. Um, it started way back then. There's things I won't... Uh, it started way before then. I mean, we had issues. That's always been man's issues. Rebellion against God. Uh, wants to do it his own way. <clears throat> That's why people don't like the message of the cross. God's in control. Not me. You know? People don't like that. We don't like that. We like to be in control. We think we can do it better than God. Um, which is pretty stupid. We wouldn't come out and say that, but uh, if you're trying to live this life by your own power, what are you saying? But, so, if you, if you're a religious person, you preach against sin, we should. We should be against sin. Christians don't want to sin. Um, but yet they find themselves sinning a lot. But you're there preaching hard against sin and you are failing in your own life. If you're judging, if you're self-righteous, a lot of times you're judging other people and not thinking yourself as bad as them, but you're doing the same thing they are. You're just as bad. In fact, you're worse off because you know better. You know God doesn't want this. You know this is wrong. It's pointed out in the scripture. You're preaching against it, but yet you keep failing. If you're honest, you're not going to be judgmental of other people. Um, if you're self-righteous, you, you will. Um, and um, going, um, but we are sure, verse 2, we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. You know, God's always going to judge sin. Uh, well, uh, it gets into a little deeper in the rest of this chapter. I'm not sure if we'll get to it today or not. Um, probably not, but uh, it's always good to introduce a subject before you get into it um, in teaching. Um, but um, we're all, the sin is always going to be judged. You can't get away with it. I mean, if it's you think... Here, the Jews are thinking, because they're Jews, that they can, uh, I'm really getting ahead of myself here, um, that they're going to get away with it. But um, I was also wanting to catch here in verse 4, before I get into that too deep, um, verse 4, or, okay, in verse 3, I guess we are kind of on track, it, goes to a little different subject in back on verse 3 do you think this O man who judges them which do such things and do the same that you will escape the judgment of God 
just because you're religious, just because you're a preacher that God is using, God's still going to, can't deal with the sin in your life. You're not going to get a free pass just because uh, Israel, you know, they're God's chosen. They thought, you know, they're not going to be judged this, they're, you know, this elite group of people. But God judges, God wouldn't let Moses get away with sin. Um, he, no one gets away with sin. It, uh, like we said before, God loves us, so He can't let us, and His judge, His totally righteous nature can't let Him put up with sin. And because of His love for us, He can't let us get away with sin because sin destroys us; it hurts us. So no one, even just because you're, you know, some great person, doesn't mean that you can uh, get away with something. Um, so God, you know, like I said, we'll, we'll get back into this, um, but it's here, so we'll just go ahead, uh, with it, um, you can't escape the judgment of God, it's going to come, um, uh, verse 4, or, or despise you the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance, as we said before, um, and I didn't coin the phrase, but there's two methods that God uh, uses to bring us back to Him, to get our attention. And that is the goodness of God. God is so good that uh, to us that we see this and we are appreciative of it and uh, we turn to Him. Um, but often we're so self-centered, um, unthankful that we... Uh, we get used to his goodness and we're, you know, back doing our own thing. The second method, uh, if that fails, is the judgment of God. Uh, we, we see this played out in the United States right now in our country. You see it in your lives. Um, a lot of these principles apply to personal life or to the, you know, country as a whole or world or church, your church, uh, the church in general, um, and so God will always try, not just try, he will do what it takes to bring you back, now you can keep, because you have free will, you can keep refusing that, like we said before, God never gives up on people, it doesn't matter how much you've sinned, how far you've gone, he doesn't give up on you. Um, you may know better in life and really messed up, and you should have known better. And maybe you've gone way off the beaten path, way off in the tulies, so to speak. And he still hasn't given up on you. It's not too late. You can come back to him. Um, just put your faith back in what he did at the cross. Ask him to forgive you. And if you'll look back, you'll see he's been trying to bring you back. Um, that light, maybe you were a Christian once and you lost your faith. We had a friend who uh, no longer believes that, I think he believes that Jesus was, but uh, he no longer believes he's saved. Well, he's lost. When, but that light that God puts in your soul, it uh, doesn't go out very easy. And so God does, in his love for you, he does everything he needs to to bring you back. Life may be getting really hard. Maybe it's God trying to tell you um, that you're off the path, that you need to come back to him. Maybe he's tried being really good to you and you ignored it, went your own way. Um, now it's time to come home. Because he and his love has brought this stuff in your life. Um, and it's going to get a lot worse if you don't turn around. Um, I've always been taught, you know, growing up, that eventually God will just give up on you. But when the Lord spoke that to my heart, I'm not so sure that that is right. I don't think he, he may have pity on you and, you know, 
make that life's not too awfully hard, you know, when it gets too rough or whatever, he still has mercy on us. Um, and he'll never give up on you. I mean, it's never too late until you die. When you die, then it's too late. And you could die any minute. And maybe your time's about up. Maybe that's why suddenly things have got really rough in your life. The Lord's trying to call you back before you leave, and it's too late for good. And so, uh, if you've never known Jesus as your Savior, if, you, if your life has become a mess, and that you see that the, it's God's love trying to call you, life's become hell on earth, so to speak. You don't know which way to turn. You've got, you know, problems stacked up in front of you that you can't cross, and it's the Lord trying to bring you back. Now it's time to come home. So if you've wandered away, you put your faith in religion, maybe innocently, uh, maybe you lost your faith, you know, a bruised reed and a smoking flax, the Lord will not quench. He'll never give up on you. And so if you'll just pray with him right now, um, you can get back and having him help you clean up all the messes. He can fix stuff that, uh, the impossible he can fix in your life. Um, so right now, if you just pray this prayer with me, Dear God in heaven, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for the way I've lived. Please forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Right now, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I repent from going my own way, and I make him, Jesus Christ, the Lord of my life. And now, according to his word, I'm saved. I'm washed, and I'm on the way to heaven. And uh, now life can turn around if you have accepted him as your Savior. That's the greatest thing you could ever do in your life. Because um, he makes the difference. His voice makes the difference. If you've got problems that, that you don't know how to pass, that you're born again, and sometimes problems still come, but now... Sometimes problems still come. While we're in this life, problems will always come. But now you've got the Lord himself to walk you through this, and his voice will really make the difference in your life. Um, so if you have got problems you can't pass over, you're born again. Now, if you're born again, everything changes in a moment. Um, things are great. But the devil will bring things to pass, and if you're saved, your faith is in Christ, and things are building up, the Lord's trying to do something in your life, but his voice, I just uh, was thinking of this, I'm trying to shut down, but I uh, want to bring this across, his, his voice makes the difference, seek his presence, if things, if the devil's throwing everything, including the kitchen sink at you, seek the presence of the Lord, and, uh, It'll change in a moment. Just like when you're saved, um, things change. Suddenly, maybe the problems are still there, but they're not really problems anymore. And the Lord will somehow get you through. So, until next time, um, 